2025 football recruiting is going to start heating up as many players will be on campus over the next few months. On today's episode of the show, we're discussing why the top three positions of need for the Louisville Cardinals in the 2025 class all are on the defensive side of the ball. With that being said, let's get right on into the show. You are locked on Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome in to another episode of the Locked On Louisville Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. <clears throat> As always, I want to personally thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. Just a reminder that the Locked On Global Podcast is free on all streaming services five days a week, your team, every day. 2025 recruiting is going to start heating up now that National Signing Day is in the rearview mirror. Uh, spring practice is about to start, so you're going to see a ton of players come on to campus for official visits, not only just at Louisville, but nationwide. So it's time to talk about the 2025 class, which now has two commitments. We'll talk about the top three needs and all three of those needs on the defensive side of the ball. We begin on the defensive line where we will spend most of our time for this episode. It begins at the edge rusher. Whether you want to look at that as defensive end or the Leo position, which is the outside linebacker spot for the 425 defensive package that Ron English runs, I don't care. The bottom line is edge rusher is the number one need in the 2025 recruiting class for the Cardinals, in my opinion, um, <clears throat> and for two reasons. Number one, projected departing players, and number two, is looking at the depth chart after those guys. So you look at who the starters are going to be in 2024. Ashton Gelati is 100% a lock to be the starting defensive end. And then you've got Tennessee transfer Tyler Barron. You've got upperclassman Mason Riger, who will be in the mix at the Leo spot. And um, some of the Younger players like Adonijah Green from the 23 class, TJ Capers from South Florida who reclassified and joined the team a year early, had the injury that he dealt with, but he um, will be a player to focus on. You have some in-state guys like Micah Carter. Um, <clears throat> Selah Brown is another name that you could focus on, etc. However, when you look at the guys departing, it makes sense because there is a very real possibility that you lose your top three players in production from this upcoming season. Now, this is such a uh, a fluid conversation to have because, um, you know, with the way that the portal has sort of overtaken the recruiting aspect of the way football programs operate, I've mentioned this a couple times. I don't necessarily think that there is going to be a class in the next five years where Louisville takes 25 high school players. I, I think the days of signing a full 25 are done because you can go to the portal and you can get immediate help that you can plug into your system right away. A uh, player that has played at the either the Power 5 level or at least the collegiate level that um, you don't have to really worry about the development aspect of things. And even if you do bring in a developmental player from the high school ranks, there's no guarantee that they're going to finish their career. You're essentially operating on a one-year basis in college athletics now. It's, I throw out this term all the time, it's unchartered territory. But that's sort of the reality of where we're at, cliche or not. Um, but you can't really make it to where we talked about last week, it really isn't 100% sustainable for you to bring in like 26 to 20 to 27 transfers a year. And I don't necessarily, it is for every now and again, I don't think it's a, a trend that's going to be sustainable. Let me rephrase. 
in Jeff Brom, it, it seems like he knows that, and the focus going forward is going to be he, going to be to have that continuity while still you know mixing in the transfer portal class. So it's going to be a little bit of both, but I feel like that there's going to be a more emphasis on the high school class to where. This year, there weren't many. I think it's like 12 to 13 commitments or something like that. And um, this upcoming high school class, I I think the number will probably be closer to, I'd say 17 to 18. I think 25 is too rich. 12 to 13 is too few. So I'm going with the medium here. That is 17 to 18, maybe 19, depending on who joins. Um, The recent episode of the show talked about in-state recruiting. But overall, uh, back to the topic at hand. I said all that to sort of set the table for this discussion because high school recruiting still is going to be key. You look at those top programs like your Georgia, like your Alabama, like your LSU, you name it, Ohio State. Continuity within the program is key. Now, they do supplement via the portal. They go out and they utilize the portal. And I understand you're talking about two different calibers here. You're talking about your traditional blue bloods. And then you're talking about Louisville, who's in that wanting to get to that next step level. But at this point in time, I think all the needs or the top three needs are going to be on the defensive side. Because it makes sense there because the transfers that you brought in, I think you've got more to work with on the roster, on the offensive side for the future rather than the defensive side. Um, And that really rings true for the trenches. And it starts out with the edge rusher spot because I think that there's some players you can bring back on the interior of the line that puts uh, interior defensive line at the number two need. But number one is edge rusher because you're going to lose Ashton Gelati at the conclusion of this season. You're going to lose Tyler Barron the Tennessee transfer at the end of the season. So project, you know, projection wise, you're losing your starters. After that, you then, I think that there's a good chance you might lose Mason Riger as well because he's an upperclassman. And even though he might not be um, a player that leaves, you're still going to need to replenish the depth at the position because it's a spot that you really don't have a ton of depth at the moment. Uh, you lose Stephen Heron from this year. Um, you lose guys like Jeff Clark, who could slide to the outside. Cam Wilson went elsewhere. Vic Brown went elsewhere. Raheem Craig. So the numbers aspect is it's it's fairly it's fairly low in terms of numbers in the um, position. So just by default, I think that there is a need to bring in a good amount of players edge wise in the 2024 class. uh, You have Maurice Davis, three-star guy from Georgia. And then outside of that um, you have Xavier Porter, who I think projects more so on the interior, but outside of that, nothing. All the other players are mainly on the offensive side of the ball or they're in the secondary. So by the nature of, the way that the scholarships roll over you number one are going to lose a good amount of your production, but number two, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky is seeing who's going to rise up after that is where the question remains. Adonijah green. We talked about being one of the five players with the most to gain from a strong showing in the spring He would probably be my number one candidate to replace some of that production. You have TJ Capers as well, but it's the million-dollar question is, what role is Capers going to be in? Is he more of a hybrid linebacker like um, like maybe a Gilbert Frierson where you can deploy him in coverage, you can utilize him as an inside linebacker, he can be a situational pass rusher? Is he a third-down specialist? Is he going to be, uh, or is he going to have enough size to play on the defensive line as an every down pass rusher? All questions that lead back to one question that needs to be answered, and that is what is the role going to be for Capers? And you have some other guys that were brought to the team in the 2023 class and through the portal, um, you know, but 
you've lost some players to the portal. You've lost some players to the draft. You're going to lose more. You only have one edge rusher in the 23 class. So by default, I feel like edge rusher with the importance of the position as it is mixed with the lack of depth at the spot. I, I think it's going to be a point of emphasis to where edge rusher, in my opinion, is the number one need for the Cardinals in the 2025 recruiting class where you're probably going to see the team add multiple guys, not only via the high school ranks, but also through the portal. It, it will definitely be a point of emphasis this time next season or this time next off season, I should clarify. So, but um, after we come back from break, we're going to stay with the defensive line to where we are going to discuss why the interior is the second position of need sort of because of the same reasons. We'll talk about that um, here momentarily after we talk about our friends and the title sponsor of the show, FanDuel. FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W or two or three. Super Bowl is coming up in two weeks, and America's number one sportsbook, FanDuel, has got you covered. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some super bets. I'm a huge fan of Super Bowl squares, but for me, it's a close-minded type of betting to where you don't really get to choose much. It's all a lot of it's based on luck. FanDuel sort of takes a little bit of the, the guesswork out. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets on which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. Right now, new customers can join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports partner of the NFL. Cardinal fans, thanks again for making Locked On Louisville your first listen of the day all throughout January. Just want to highlight that if you don't know, well, you do now. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Like I mentioned before the break, we're sticking with the defensive line, just moving to a different position for the second um, top position of need for the 2025 recruiting class moving forward for Louisville. You might say, well, it's a little bit too early to be talking about 2025 recruiting since, you know, early or not early, but National Signing Day is literally um, just coming up here shortly. I, I actually made a mistake. I completely said that National Signing Day had passed earlier on in the episode. That's obviously not true. Early signing day had passed. Um, I honestly get them mixed up now, considering that early signing day sort of like replaces how um, important and pivotal National Signing Day is. But I don't necessarily think Louisville's going to do much on National Signing Day. So the point still stands. We're coming up upon spring practice where multiple players – in the 2025 class, we're talking about a ton, probably over 100 players will be on the Cardinals campus over the next couple of weeks as spring practice commences, getting closer to the spring game. Um, the position changes, but the location really doesn't. We're still sticking with the defensive line. Sort of the same storyline for the interior of the trenches for the Cardinals. You're losing a lot of guys in 2000 or after this season. And it's sort of interesting right now to see where the Cardinals are projecting at in terms of um, the guys that are going to be coming back for 2025. And even though players will be coming back, there a lot of them are going to be upperclassmen. So you look at the guys you're going to be losing. And Jermaine Lole comes back for his final year of eligibility, so he will by default be gone. Thor Griffith is, I believe he's gone as well, the FCS All-American from Harvard. He'll be gone. Jordan Gerard from Florida International. I, I believe that there is a solid chance at um, him potentially going to the next level. The issue with some of these transfers and really players in general is that the COVID year has really just kind of thrown things into a weird loop because there's so many extra years of eligibility. So, 
you really just kind of have to see how things go. I believe that Gerard has two years of eligibility remaining. So even if he does return, he'll have one year remaining in 2025. Um, Des tell Jared Dawson could end up going to the league. And then you have some of the younger guys like Tawfiq Thomas, Selah Brown, um, Wu Spencer, Micah Carter, Sadiq Clemens, the list goes on. It, uh, Xavier Porter from the 2024 class, et cetera, so on and so forth. But same, literally like the same reason why edge rusher is number one is the reason why interior defensive line is number two. Because, I mean, it's sort of like splitting hairs. You could probably go 1A, 1B. But I think that there's an opportunity for there to be more of a returning presence for the Cardinals in 2025. So it's just a matter of filling out depth and planning for the future. Because even if some of these guys come back, they're only going to have a year, maybe two tops to play. And well, outside of maybe some of the younger guys like Micah Carter, uh, Sadiq Clemens, Xavier Porter, so on and so forth. But you lose a ton. And with the 425 base defensive package, you know, you have to fill those spots up front. And let's face it, one thing that the Cardinals have to focus on here is making sure that you have the necessary depth that Louisville didn't necessarily have just a couple of years ago um, when Scott Satterfield took over, even when Scott Satterfield halfway through his tenure had some issues with depth at the defensive tackle position. So I'm looking at that. I'm looking at the whole defensive line as a unit as being the focal point for the 2025 recruiting class. You could literally kind of scrap the two segments and just write defensive line because of the impact that it has on the remainder of the defense as a whole. We saw when the Cardinals weren't able to get the pass rush in the back half of the schedule that the secondary struggled in coverage. It wasn't just the fault of the trenches, but it didn't necessarily help either. So filling those numbers, filling those needs. And I think you can go even further than saying it's just a focal point in terms of getting the numbers. I think you have to add one, two, maybe three, a couple guys that you feel like could come in and make some sort of a role right away because I know that you're on a one-year basis in terms of your roster, but that doesn't really take away the um, you know planning for the future. And I think that that's where Jeff Brom, Jeff Brom is wanting to introduce a little bit more continuity to where you don't have to have these worries on a year-in, year-out basis. It's great what the team is doing in the portal. I am not knocking it whatsoever. I'm not. It's not one of those, this is great, but type statements. I'm just pointing out that it's challenging to have to turn a roster over every single year with new players that have to learn the scheme and hope that they're able to cohesively come together as a unit, as a team, and, and play well and, and get you to where you need to be. But, <coughs> sorry, for me, you could go a couple different places here. You could say the same thing about the linebacker spot, although I think that that's probably on the outside looking in, probably number four, because of some of the guys that you still have at the position. And, you know, Stan Quan Clark is there. You know, even if TJ Caper slides into the linebacker spot, I like Trent Carter, the three star from Jacksonville that Louisville got in the 2024 class. You could go cornerback. Um, you could go safety, which will be number three, spoiler alert. But edge rusher's number one, and if it's number one, interior defensive line is literally right behind it because of the impact that it has on the overall defense. The Cardinals have to be very solid in the trenches. We saw how they were unable to get to that next level when they weren't that good in the trenches, and I think that it's going to be a focal point in the portal. But I would like to see – you know, some higher rated players be brought to this team via the high school ranks at the positions as well. Sort of like Adonijah Green, like TJ Capers, um, you know, the list goes on. So extremely excited to see what the Cardinals are able to do in the Flyville 25 class. But I think one is one thing is for certain. 
defensive line is truly going to be a focal point. So, like I mentioned, the all three of the spots, all three of the top positions of need are on the defense. Number three for me, and this one I kind of went back and forth between linebacker and this one. I'm going with safety, and I'm going to explain why to you here uh, momentarily after we talk about our friends over at Jace Medical. I know we come to sports to escape from some of the crazy realities of real life, but can we just talk for a minute about preparing? According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade. Have no fear. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics that treat a long list of bacterial infections, including respiratory issues, sinusitis, skin infections, and more. Visit jacemedical.com. Complete your physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board-certified physician. And your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be more prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com. Use the offer code Locked On to get $20 off of your order. Final segment of the show, um, continuing on ranking the top three positions of need for the Louisville Cardinals in the 2025 class as the uh, recruiting will start to heat up. And... I know that some are going to ask, well, why, why is, why are there no needs on the offensive side? Why are those not stressed at the moment? Well, there are needs. There's needs everywhere. But you look at the spots. Running back, you're probably going to lose Penny Boone and Don Chaney, but you'll theoretically have a senior Maurice Turner. You'll have a redshirt sophomore Kiwan Brown, and two um, likely redshirt freshman running back who were four stars in high school. So if you want to go get one more running back, that's great. But getting one more player at the position, a position that's probably not going to start, it's not a top position of need. Quarterback, you have Pierce Clarkson, Brady Allen. Um, you have uh, Deuce Adams, et cetera. Mason Mims is already committed. If you want to take one more, that's great. One more player is not going to be the focal point of the class. Tight end, sort of same thing. Jamar Johnson, Dylan Mesman. Jaleel Skinner, some guys at that position. If you want to take one, that's fine. Same thing applies. Offensive line, it'll be interesting because right now they have some – offensive line will always be a priority. D don't mistake me saying that, oh, if it's not th top three, it's not a priority because that couldn't be any further from the truth. It definitely is a priority. But um, with some of the younger guys, Madden Sanker, Luke Burgess, um, Joe Crocker, some of these younger players that are on the team – um, I feel better about offensive line recruiting, and I think that that's going to be something that they probably more so utilize the portal for. And then wide receiver, yes, Brooks and Lacey are probably going to the NFL after this year. And then you have Chris Bell, who's going to be an upperclassman. But you have some talent, JoJo Stone, Sean Boykins, um, Kataris Hicks, Julio McClain. It will be a priority. I think it could potentially be top five, but not um, too stressed enough to be – top three so offensive side of the ball um important obviously but not as important as the defensive side we started with interior or i'm sorry edge and then interior defensive line cornerback i didn't go with here because you have some younger guys like aaron williams marcus washington tay holloway um, who have multiple years and some other players raymond mosby from the 2024 class i went back and forth between safety and linebacker and honestly i feel like i could have gone 3a 3b here but you're potentially losing the entirety of your starting safety room, MJ Griffin and Wesley Walker. Blake Ruffin probably goes the – I think he has one more year, if I'm not mistaken, two at the most. If Even if it is two, it's a, it's a one-year thing. Uh, Dave McCullough from Oklahoma has multiple years, but you know D'Angelo Hutchinson will be an upperclassman. And after that – you don't really have many numbers. So you're going to have to replace a ton of production from the 2024 team. And safety is the spot that I'm looking at as being the top three need because of um, just those numbers alone. You don't have a Stan Quan Clark returning to the safety room. So that is literally the deciding factor here between three and four because linebacker will need some spots because there's a chance that Quinn and Alderman could go to the league. And if you put Capers as a linebacker, um, Jeronte Davis will go to the league as well. But if you put Capers as a linebacker, um, you know, you have Antonio Watts, 
who knows what Ben Perry will do, et cetera. So for me, safety is the third need for me because you're going to lose Devin Neal as well. He will likely have I, – I think he has one more year of eligibility if, if I'm not remaining. So you're going to lose the guys at safety, the majority – of the production, not only the production, but the depth as well. There's a good chance heading into the 2025 year with guys just on the roster, you could potentially be just looking at Dave McCullough, maybe Blake Ruffin, and D'Angelo Hutchinson. And at that point, I think you're needing to probably go to the portal and get a starter, maybe two, while also going to the high school ranks and bringing in, I'd say probably two safeties. It would make sense. Um, you know, going out and trying to play the long-term game and get some continuity. But ultimately, it's a matter of trying to add a difference maker right away and also adding depth. So a little bit of a tricky debate to have, but it is what it is. Safety-wise, you do have Jathan Hatch in the 2024 class from Corinth, Mississippi. There's Jaden Spearman, who's a three-star, but he's a walk-on. Even Still, he's a three-star, so you're technically bringing in two guys to the room. Um, but this is a spot that I would like to see Louisville really swing for the fences with, like the defensive line trying to go out and get a difference maker that could be a multiple-year starter to where you're not having to go back to the portal and you know bring in and absolutely turn over that position every single year. So I'm interested to see how that recruiting goes for Flyville 24 moving forward. Um, but or I'm sorry, Flyville 25 moving forward. But those are the three for me. And I also do want to point out the linebacker spot because I think that that's a key one as well. As I mentioned, TJ Quinn, Jalen Alderman, they could be, uh, well, I'm actually, I, I mean, I think that those guys are probably going to be seniors, if I'm not mistaken. But I know that they probably have a red shirt year as well. So I think that if they're back for 2025, it's probably a one-year thing. So you're obviously planning for the future. There's no Geronte Davis. I could see the Cardinals going to the portal and going out and getting a young linebacker with multiple years remaining to try to uh, you know, use – as not necessarily a stopgap, but for some continuity for the position post-2024, etc. So if Stan Kwan is, I'm sorry, if TJ Capers is viewed as a linebacker, that's great. Stan Kwan will be a junior in 2025. In that point, you're just starting the numbers game of trying to keep the cupboard replenished, so to speak. So... I think that those are the top three positions of need for the 2025 class. They all come on the defensive side of the ball. Again, that's not saying that the needs on offense aren't great, but I think that there's more of an emphasis based on depth alone and who you're projecting to lose post-2024, really marking the needs here. So that's going to wrap up the month of January for the Locked On Global Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Everyone have a great day. We'll see you right back here very soon.